in this lab, we're going to be focusing on a pyramidal horn antenna, and in particular, this pyramidal horn antenna. In fact, we have two identical pyramidal horn antenna in this lab, and uh, one, one of them is going to be used as the transmitter. The other one that's identical to the transmit one would be used as the antenna under test or a receiving antenna. In this exercise of antenna training and measuring system by lab volt, we're going to be focusing on a couple of parameters associated with pyramidal horn antenna. For example, front to back ratio, gain, and half power beam widths. But before getting to that, we want to first check the propagation loss equation. So we have an equation for propagation loss, and we're going to do two experiments to confirm the propagation loss equation. To do that, I'm going to first have the antenna at 80 centimeter away from each other. I'm going to collect one radiation pattern, and then I'm going to go and increase the distance between the two antenna to 1.6 meters. So uh, if the first distance is R1, then uh, the, other, uh, the second distance would be two times R1. And then we're going to be collecting another radiation pattern for the new distance. We're going to compare these two radiation patterns that we got in terms of maximum signal level. And then we look at the difference between the maximum signal level. And then we're going to check if that satisfies the, uh, what we expect from the equation. So to do the first experiment now, the distance is at 80 centimeters. I'm going to have the RF power on. And the antennas right now are in the H-plane mode uh, of, of, of collection, and it's copole. And I'm going to start the data collection. So again, as you expect, the antenna under test is moving. And uh, I mean, again, ideally, I shouldn't be here because it needs to be as close as possible to the free space. The antenna under test is moving. One thing that I already checked before setting up the experiment, I made sure that the aperture of the antenna is aligned with the axis of rotation. And uh, now, in this particular case, we are now getting to our uh, almost 360. Now the antennas are facing toward each other directly, so that's probably the location of maximum signal level. And now it's done. So now we have our pattern. So my next job would be to increase the distance between the two antennas and do the same measurement. Okay, right now I have two whole identical horn antenna. They're separated by 80 centimeter. And uh, the frequency of operation is uh, close to 10 gigahertz. We are in the X band. And what we have right now is both antennas are positioned in a way that I'm collecting copole H plane. Now, uh, so let's uh, start collecting. Uh, before starting, I tried it one time with this uh, attenuation control. And I found that applying 24 dB attenuation uh, is, is going to be reasonable So to avoid saturation. So I'm going to start my acquisition by pressing this button. So now I'm collecting. So right now I'm approaching the back lobe of this horn antenna. So the antenna is moving right now and we're going almost to the back lobe. So now uh, you're going to see the back lobe of this horn antenna. And now we again moving uh, toward the main lobe when the antennas are facing directly each other. So yes, now the main lobe is appearing. Yes, and now we have it. So I'm going to store that under H-plane with document 1. So 
this is our document one H plane we're gonna store it here so uh, if you look at what we collected from this you clearly see our main lobe and you also see our back lobe so later on you may want to find front to back ratio and uh, in in this particular data acquisition the maximum signal level that we have is minus 2.37 and uh, the half power beam width is uh, 21.49 degrees so now we we gonna go and perform another experiment by increasing the distance between the two between the two antennas now we have increased the distance between the receiving antenna and the transmitting antenna to the twice of the prior distance so in the big in the start of the lab we started with 80 centimeter now in terms of the separation between the two antennas we are at 1.6 meter now uh, again it is in h plane we're measuring copole so i'm gonna i'm gonna start the experiment and i'm gonna perform another uh, h plane pattern and i'm gonna save it under uh, the second document document two document one for was for the case that it was 80 centimeter and then we're going to compare these two pattern okay now we have the two antennas at 1.6 meter apart we have two horn antennas identical horn antennas measuring h plane the pattern that you already have on the screen it was for the h plane pattern when the distance between the two antennas were at 80 centimeter now we increase it to 1.6 meter and we're gonna perform the same experiment now we keep everything the same as in particular the attenuation level that we had in the previous experiment was 24 db we're gonna keep it at 24 db so let's start the experiment and as it goes you can compare it with the previous measurement so what you expect according to Fries equation is that when the distance between the two antennas increases the received power should decrease now we 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 sh and we probably gonna see that effect mainly in the main lobe because the signal is stronger and it's easier to see so uh, we just uh, now we are approaching to our main lobe And we're gonna see what kind of difference we have between the two main lobes so now okay so I'm gonna store that under document 2 and H plane so if you look at our new acquisition you see that this is 23.31 degrees of half power beam widths and the first one we were at 21.49 so if we are measuring per perfectly in the far field with no errors the half power beam width should stay the same because that's the angular properties of the radiation pattern but here we have a slight differences about two degrees differences which we accept as our measurement error in this case so remember half power beam widths ideally should stay the same between these two patterns for two different distances then what what's what what's very important for us in this case is to check the maximum signal level now to, to to better see that i'm gonna rotate all this pattern so that the maximum signal level is at zero degrees so this makes the comparison easier to see so yeah these are the two patterns that i have and if i looked at look at the maximum signal level for the first case it's at minus 2.37 
for the second case I'm at minus 9.12 so I mean you can find the exact difference between them but this is about 7 dB less when I when I double the distance now we want to we want to see if how it compares to the theoretical value that we have from Fries equation we just compared the radiation pattern of uh, the horn antenna in two cases when the distance was 80 centimeter and when the distance was increased to 160 centimeter which is the current case and we observed that the maximum signal level drops by about 6.75 if i'm not mistaken yes 6.75 was the drop and then you need to compare this with the theoretical value and explain any discrepancies now we're gonna be uh, focusing on this on, uh, with the distance of 160 centimeter in the previous experiment uh, we adjusted the attenuation controls such that we can compare 80 centimeter with 160 centimeter uh, but now because we are now focusing on 160 centimeter i'm going to change the attenuation control to a number which is more appropriate for 160 centimeter so that i can see better uh, also back radiation for the calculation of front to back ratio so uh, i'm just gonna change it a little bit and then figure out what would be the best attenuation control and then we're gonna start the experiment okay we measured uh, the radiation pattern in two cases as you see this was for 80 centimeter separation this was for 1.6 meter separation or 160 centimeter separation we got uh, the difference between the maximum signal level in both cases was 6.75 dB now uh, what we're gonna do we're gonna be repeating the measurement when the distance was 160 centimeter but as you notice here we applied a 24 dB attenuation because at the 80 centimeter case the signal could be very strong and we could get saturation but not right now because we are focusing on 160 centimeter we don't need this much attenuation so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna decrease the attenuation a little bit and perform uh, another measurement so just as a guess let's go to 12 dB instead of 24 and perform another measurement so let's start our measurement so that's again for 160 centimeter but with less attenuation so now i'm applying remember that this one that i'm uh, measuring right now uh, is not going to have the maximum signal level at the same uh, angle as these two existing plot because i have not rotated it to adjust the maximum signal level to be at zero degrees so you get our the back lobe of the horn antenna and now we are going to the main lobe and here is the uh, the thing that we need to keep an eye to see if we get saturation or not if we get saturation then we need to decrease the signal level you see right here now we got to saturation so that essentially means I need more attenuation so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna ignore this measurement I'm just gonna delete it and then I'm gonna increase my attenuation maybe this time I'm gonna go to 18 so I'm gonna repeat the measurement so we get to the back lobe and now we are going to the main lobe one of the sources of the error is that because this is 160 centimeter i'm now sitting very close to the transmitting antenna the computer is just beside the transmitting antenna and now as you see it's now 
very reasonable in terms of the maximum signal level so i'm just going to accept this as a good attenuation and i'm just going to store it on the h plane and i'm going to make a new document i'm going to go to document number three and i'm going to store that under document three as my h plane so so now what what i want you to pay attention here is that we measured uh, we measured this horn antenna under three situation right now document one was for the small separation document two was for the larger separation and document three is for the larger separation but with a different attenuation ideally you need to get the same half power beam widths for all of them and they're very much similar for the first case we have 21.49 for the second case we had 23.31 and now we have 23.02 degrees of half power beam widths of course because we are changing attenuation and also distance the maximum signal level is different so to be consistent with previous measurements that we have i could rotate this one so that the maximum signal level is located at zero degrees now this becomes my new measurements now i'm going to do another measurement and i'm going to perform uh, h plane of the same for the same distance and for the same attenuation okay we just finished performing h plane cut measurement in the copole for the horn antenna now I'm going to go to the E-plane pattern measurement. To do E-plane pattern measurement, as you know, I need to rotate the antenna on the test by 90 degree. So to do that, I'm just going to loosen this a little bit and I'm just going to rotate it and use the other pin for the connection. And I'm just going to tighten the connection. That's my E-plane. Now, I have rotated my antenna under test 90 degree to go to E plane. But if I measure like that, it's not going to be copole E plane because now the, the receiving antenna expect horizontal polarization, but this antenna is set up to be vertically polarized for the previous measurement. Since in the previous measurement, the antenna was expecting vertical polarization. So this was set originally for the vertical polarization. Now that I rotated this 90 degree, now this is in the E plane. To make it copole E plane, I need to I need to rotate the ant the transmitting antenna also 90 degree. So I'm gonna loosen this a little bit, and I'm gonna use the other pin, and I'm just gonna tighten it. Okay, now I'm ready to perform copole. E plane measurements. Okay, we performed our measurements for uh, two different distances. This was distance 1.6, sorry, this was distance 80 centimeter, this was distance 160 centimeter, and then we compared these two cases to, uh, to figure out the propagation path loss. Now, then, then we went to a nec the, the next step. So uh, let me hide the, these two previous measurements. Now, we ended up with only this measurement. This measurement is for 160 centimeter separation. So this, was, this is essentially identical to this measurement that we had. This was also 160 centimeter, but because this one used a, a, a stronger attenuation, the signal level was a smaller. So because we are fixing our distance to 160 centimeter, we used another attenuation uh, level to to make it to make it uh, a little bit in terms of maximum signal level more reasonable. So that's why I'm hiding this previous measurement, and I'm going to use this h plane cut now so to in summary this was 160 centimeter separation with 18 db attenuation that's my h plane now let's measure e plane in particular copole e plane of the same thing so let me start the acquisition and it starts 
right now antenna is almost uh, 90 degrees uh, with respect to uh, uh, ante transmitting antenna now we are approaching the the back side of the antenna under test so this is my back low and now we are again rotating now the relative angle with respect to transmitting antenna is about 90 degrees and now we are approaching the main low it's a still difficult to compare this with the uh, H plane because I rotated H plane so that the maximum signal level is at zero degree but this one I have not rotated yet so now it is done I'm gonna store it under E plane and to be able to compare I'm gonna set the maximum signal level to zero degree now if you compare these two let's see what we can see here so the first thing that we can see would be the maximum signal level of these two uh, to to have a little bit of reduced noise let me turn off the rf generator so that the beep is gone okay now the rf generator is off now if you if you compare this maximum signal level you see that in the e plane it is minus 2.58 in the h plane it is minus 1.96 so in fact it's about 0.6 db different so as we discussed it many times the maximum signal level for the E plane cut and H plane cut should be on top of each other. But of course, we have some uh, measurement errors due to many factors. And the 0.6 dB, uh, given that we are not in an echoic chamber, it's acceptable for us. So this is the first thing that you should check to see if your if your measurement is makes sense or should be improved. The other thing that you can notice here is the half power beam widths. For H plane, we have about 23. For the E plane, we have about 20 degrees. Okay, so now that we have our E plane and H plane, it's also good to take a look at our uh, front to back ratio in both cases. To do that, I'm gonna have two cursors here, and I'm just gonna move the cursor in a way that I can uh, measure my uh, front to back ratio. So for E plane and H plane, I'm just gonna set one of them at zero degrees that I have my maximum signal level and one of them in the back. So, and if you look at now the, the relative measurement, the cursor one has been set to zero dB and cursor 2 has been uh, accordingly adjusted now you see that with for the e plane the difference between cursor 1 and cursor 2 which are opposite to each other 180 degrees difference is about minus 16.74 for e plane and minus 20 db for h plane that's our front to back ratio now to see that better maybe i can just remove the cursor and also remove the h plane so now you see this is the e plane maximum uh, and then this is my front uh, this is my back lobe and this is my front lobe now the difference between these two would be front to back lobe ratio now i could bring the h plane and i can hide e plane now you can see the same thing that would be the the maximum signal level this is my front lobe this is my back lobe now i can find the difference between these two which would be front to back lobe ratio